once again conducted a nuclear test and on February 7th used ballistic missile technology to launch a satellite in a series of violations of relevant resolutions of the Security Council. China has expressed its explicit opposition to these acts. China has always insisted on the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, insisted on the maintenance of peace and stability on the peninsula, and insisted on resolving problems through dialogue and consultations. The resolution adopted by the Council today embodies the above-mentioned principle of three insists. This resolution demonstrates the seriousness of the international community in opposing the further development of DPRK's nuclear and missile capacities and safeguarding the international non-proliferation regime and reaffirms the commitment to seek a solution to the nuclear issue on the Korean Peninsula through dialogue and consultations and to support the resumption of six-party six talks and the September 19 joint statement thus facilitating the effort to seek a peaceful solution to the nuclear issue on the Korean Peninsula. China always advocates peaceful settlement of international disputes and hotspot issues through political and diplomatic means such as dialogue and negotiations. Sanctions are not an end in themselves, and the Security Council resolutions cannot fundamentally solve the nuclear issue on the Korean Peninsula. Today's resolution should be a new starting point and a paving stone for a political settlement of the nuclear issue on the Korean Peninsula. History has demonstrated once again that dialogue and negotiations represent the only right way to address the nuclear issue on the peninsula in order to achieve an early improvement of the situation on the ground and explore viable ways to resolve the nuclear issue on the Korean peninsula. China urges the parties concerned to push forward negotiations to advance denuclearization and replace the armistice mechanism with the peace mechanism in parallel. While keeping the general direction of denuclearization, this approach accommodates in a balanced way main concerns of the parties involved, helps find a breaking point for the resumption of talks, and is practicable. China is willing to work with the parties concerned to explore in-depth specific steps to, of putting this idea in practice and hopes that all parties concerned will work together towards this end. Mr. President. As a close neighbor to the Korean Peninsula and a state which bears an important responsible for the, uh, responsibility for the stability on the peninsula, China has always insisted on the overall goal of denuclearization of the peninsula, opposed conflicts and chaos on the peninsula, and worked to maintain the legitimate security interests of itself and other countries of the region. At this, press, at this moment, all parties concerned should avoid actions that will further aggravate the tension on the ground. China opposes the deployment of the third anti-missile system on the Korean Peninsula because such an action harms the strategic security interests of China and other countries of the region, goes against the goal of maintaining peace, security, and stability of the peninsula, and will seriously undermine the effort of the international community to seek a political solution to the question of the Korean Peninsula. Currently, the situation on the Korean Peninsula is highly complex and sensitive, which makes it all the more necessary for us to keep calm and use diplomatic wisdom. China hopes that parties concerned will meet China halfway. Always bear in mind the overall need of maintaining peace and stability of the Korean Peninsula and Northeast Asia. Make determined efforts to dispel the dark cloud of war, pour our wisdom, and actively seek common understanding and work together for the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. China will continue to take a responsible approach to enhance communication and coordination with the parties concerned and play an active and constructive role for an early realization of the lasting stability and peace of the Korean Peninsula. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of China for his statement. And let me now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. I'd like to thank you, Mr. President. The Security Council of the United Nations has just unanimously adopted a new resolution which tightens the regime of international sanctions against the DPRK. This was the outcome of the fact that due, over the past two months, uh, uh, 
banned military activity by DPRK, a test of nuclear weapons and a, a launch of a, a ballistic missile have ratcheted up tensions on the Korean Peninsula and in the region as a whole. The Russian Federation strongly condemns the violation by Pyongyang of uh, resolutions of the Security Council. Today it's important to focus on what happens after the adoption of the resolution. The set of the uh, sanctions uh, envisioned is quite harsh. However, the document does open, uh, leave open the possibility for the DPRK to return to the six-party process, which should be urgently restarted. Sanctions in this case are not an end in themselves, but rather a means. By shutting down as much as possible the financing of the uh, DPRK's nuclear ballistic programs, the idea is to ensure a return to the table of negotiations of all the interested parties. The Russian Federation remains convinced that there is no alternative to a political and diplomatic solution to the issue of the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Russia is very seriously worried about the negative trends and the way the situation of, uh, in the North uh, East Asia has been developing. We're, we're concerned about attempts to use the actions of uh, Pyongyang as a, a justification to increase the military capabilities of the region, including offensive weapons and uh, the THAAD missile defense system. Mr. President, uh, the resolution we've adopted today should not be used to choke off the North Korean economy. In this connection, we are concerned about the hasty uh, introduction, even before the uh, today's a resolution was adopted in the introduction of unilateral sanctions against the DPRK. All this could have very negative humanitarian consequences for the many millions of inhabitants of the DPRK, especially those who are most vulnerable. The international community and first and foremost those in humanitarian organizations that are providing assistance and, assistance and technical support to Pyongyang should pay uh, special attention to this uh, aspect. The events of the past year show that even the most complex international crisis situations can be resolved through cooperation and dialogue, and when there is political will uh, by all parties to find uh, mutually acceptable solutions. We call on all participants of the six-party talks to resume these talks as soon as possible. Russia is ready to engage in this kind of cooperation. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank uh, the representative of the Russian Federation for his statement, and I'll give the floor to the representative of the UK.